You never know when that skill <laughs> may be needed later in life. Dude. You never know. Yeah, I, I never thought I'd be into having to learn so much about recording <laughs> equipment. Yeah. But. But here we are. Here we are. How are things going with you, man? Dude, good. I, uh, on my way over, I had a funny instance. So you ever, like, when you're driving on the road, give props to someone who did something really good at driving? Oh, yeah. So me and another person were each trying to make less coming from opposite directions, crossing, like, four lanes. And there was a break in the traffic. They had their signal. I had mine. We each knew where everyone was going. Mm -hmm. And shoo, just skated right on by. And I was like, yeah. Good fucking driving. Good yeah. job. Go you. But there's like one of those for every 10 terrible drivers. Oh, yeah. No, I think that the key to driving is being able to predict what stupid drivers are going to do. Defensive oh, driving. Oh, good, good luck. Yeah. yeah. See, because I'm an aggressive driver as it is. Yeah. Like, just <clears throat> used to drive in Chicago to high school, so I'm just used to having to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. Indiana, they're way too nice to drivers. Yeah. Like, I appreciate you trying to let me go. But at a certain point, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Just keep keep it moving. Yeah. Or a really good parallel park. You see one of those, you gotta like get the way. Yeah. Like oh, great parallel park. Oh yeah. That's the one thing that I've loved the most ever since I started my own business is the fact that I'm not making a regular commute mm. to work. So now I calculate when I'm driving during the day. I know which times of the day to drive to where I need to drive yep. to avoid traffic. Yep. And the amount of time that's that saved me over the past years being able to do that. Mm -hmm. It's it's yeah. all about timing, man. Yeah, if I'm if I'm at the office and I either coach or take the four thirty to five thirty class, I know I need to wait till like six, six fifteen before I head home. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. Like I'll eat, I'll do some work, whatever. But I'm with you. You gotta you know the times. Mm -hmm. And then on Friday, it's kind of a crapshoot between like two and four. You never mm -hmm. know. Because no one works a full day on Friday in Indianapolis. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, other than that, man, we got, speaking of the office, we got some interns now. Oh, really? We have interns, yeah. What do they do? Um, so most of them are marketing. They're putting on events. Um, one guy is doing like video stuff too, so... There's four different interns, but most are marketing-ish in some mm -hmm. aspect. Um, I think maybe one. No, I don't think I don't think any of them are like Kinesio or anything. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, they're super fun. Some good IEPY. I think all of them. And it was funny. I was out with Marquise a couple weeks ago, and we're at Brothers watching some ball, and uh, this kid comes up. He's like, "All right, so and so, you had this and this." I'm like. I'm like, holy shit, Maddie. And he goes, hey, what's up, man? It was one of our interns <laughs> working at Brothers. And I was like, bro, when are, like, what nights are you here? So he's like, yeah, I'm practicing to be a bartender. I was like, man, when you're tending the bar, you let me know and I'll come through. Yeah. I was like, I'll get that heavy-handed pour, my man. Yeah, I love it. But, yeah, yeah so. The, the more bartenders, you know, the better. Dude, 100%. Good. 100%. Key connection. Another one's in wholesaling. So I think he and I are going to get lunch because I want to get back into that. Okay. I learned about it, then didn't do anything with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so we got some got some cool kids. Uh, got two men, two women, um, just through the summer. But it's cool, they can like see how their work actually impacts a business. They're not in some corporate cog wheel where, mm -hmm. uh, and is what I'm doing really gonna help? Mm -hmm. They get to see like Monica, the business owner, every single day mm -hmm. and how what they do matters. So yeah. that's kind of cool. They were talking to me about that one day and um, some are trying to Simply Nano too. Like mm -hmm. I, I use it after I work out. Like, oh man, my legs are sore. It's like, here, try this. Like, oh, it smells good. Everyone loves how it smells. Mm -hmm. You love how it smells. Yeah. What do you say, Fruity Pebbles? I, yeah, it's, it, like it, it reminds me of fruity, fruity Pebbles, yeah. I've been, uh, I've been playing a lot more tennis lately, like two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. And I feel like my body's not used to that type of movement right now. Oh, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to find the article, but uh, a group of medical research researchers researched, like, what's the best sport for longevity, mm -hmm. and they said tennis. Tennis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess you can play that. It's, it's, it's not, it's not contact, but it's, like, it's, like, anaerobic, or it's aerobic, anaerobic, what's the difference? Where you're, like, run, you're aerobic. running, yeah, aerobic, and then you just stop. 
Mm. And you and then you yeah. go back, you run, and you stop. Yeah, that's, that's the best sport for it. But anyway, yeah, I've been playing a lot more lately, and I've been wearing like shoes that aren't really meant for tennis. And I've been cutting back and forth, so I've been having a little bit of like ankle swelling, not mm. like major, not like anything painful or anything, but like a, like swell a little bit at night. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just used some of the the simple nano that you gave me, and man. It's good stuff, I, w- I want to get back out there right now. I played this morning. It, I want to get back it out. Really is. I use it three times a day. Yeah. Like you know me, I'm an ingredients whore. Uh huh. Like if there's artificial flavors or sweeteners, I'm probably not going to do it. Mm. But uh, yeah, I love it, man. Three times a day on a good day or good. a bad day. Yeah, that's how it should go on a bad day. Yeah. 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 Recover, um, recovery is key. Yeah, whether it's that. Where it's buying yourself a foam roller and rolling out all your... It really is, man. Yeah. yeah, people... Like, the workout's the easy part. Yeah. Even if the workout is brutal. Like, mm. the recovery is is everything outside of working out, which people fuck up. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that's not like, jabby. not like blatantly, but mm-hmm. people don't know what they don't know. And I'm, look, I'm not always the best on sleep. Yeah, I'm up late working. I'm up early working. You know mm-hmm. how it goes. Yeah. Gotta live the style right now. Um, yeah. But... You know, and it gives you an excuse to listen to podcasts too. Yeah, if you need to recover, like if you need to stretch out or whatever. Oh, like, for sure. Like you're not, you're not looking at your phone, so you might as well listen to something or like, do something valuable while you're doing it. Yeah, today I'm just gonna get mobile, maybe go on a walk, do some light like, band work, and, and that's gonna be it for me today. Mm-hmm. So you know, you don't always have to thrash it, but yeah, good recovery, man. And yeah, if you're gonna foam roll, stretch after you roll out. Yeah. So other than that. Um, I know we'll get into business in a little bit, but I have another CrossFit competition in September. Oh yeah? It's called Strength in Our Streets. Um, yes, yeah, to help fundraise money for, uh, or fundraise for Wheeler Mission. Mm-hmm. So gonna help feed the homeless, and it's a huge comp. Like, it's up at Grand Park. Oh, okay, and cool. And it's teams of 10, and there's already like 30 teams, 30 some wow. teams. Wow, that'll just be awesome. Like, People can, can can people actually like come and watch you? Unlike the last competition, where you can yeah. only bring one which, spectator. Which I should have just told people to show the fuck up because that's all that happened. Yeah, Jim like what what cool. are they what are they gonna tell people? Like hey, like you can't come out here and support your friend. No. Go home. No, it was no, that was <laughs> stupid. Um, but yeah, but shoot yeah, me the this one, dude. Grand Park, yeah, it's gonna be huge. Like when is a it? Huge uh, September. Is it like the seventeenth, maybe? I need to double check the date, but I know it's like mid September. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be a big one. There's gonna be really good teams. I'm just gonna mark that week just to remind myself. Appreciate it. I think I'll double check. It's a Friday? Saturday. Okay, eighteenth. I yeah. think so. But I'll double check. Um actually I have a laptop in front of me. Into the calendar it goes. All I'll right. Look right now. Appreciate that. Yeah, um, But this is your second one that you've done? This will be my second. Second, okay. Yep. Um, Good. Let's see. Um, yeah, September 18th. All right, cool. Oh, God, I'm good. So, yeah, that'll be my second comp. Um, and then there's another one October, but I don't think I'll do it. Like just back to back months for me, I just need a little break. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, teams ten. There's gonna be so there's some really good local gyms that they're sending people to the CrossFit Games. Mm-hmm. Like that's what they're there to work on. And you know some other people on the team were telling me this. I'm like, you know what? <clears throat> maybe they smoke this. Maybe they don't. Mm-hmm. A- any given day. And so. A month out leading up to it, like, I'm going to go on a strict prep, like, no booze, like, nothing like that, because I just want to see, like, what can we do? Yeah. Even if it's top ten, that'd be kind of dope. Yeah. But any given day, like, we got some killers on the team, man. Yeah. We got some some real killers. Good, man. Cameras so, are watching in action. Yeah, I'm excited. Oh, I'm, I mean, you see me get competitive at pool, like, yeah. <laughs> Here I'm gonna to go to a very dark. Oh place. wow! You get more competitive very, than that. Very before. dark place. Damn. Because yeah. like I know, and there's other people that be like, oh yeah, me too. But like, I'll go through a lot of just more pain and mm-hmm. grit it out so I can win. Yeah. Good. I like but, that. Mamba yeah. mentality. Yeah. So we'll see. But I know. I mean, there's people that are bigger than me. There's people that have been doing this a lot longer. Mm-hmm. You know. So 
Hey, compare yourself to who you were last time. Not saying I'm better, but I'll just quit these pain. Is there anything that you're trying to improve upon from your last competition for this one? Yes, so I've, I've nailed down some other movements. Um, I'm working up to a 135 overhead squat. I think mm -hmm. that'll be kind of a, a baseline weight for yeah. that type of movement if that's in the competition. Mm -hmm. I think a 135 overhead squat would be a good RX weight where I can safely assume that'll be a minimum. Okay. So I think that'll be my, that's my toughest thing right now. Um, I was just jerking, squat clean and jerking close, uh, it was like 215, getting to 225. So not too worried about anything really other than the overhead squat. Okay. And that's just a lot of mobility reasoning too. Good. Yeah. Is there anything so, you're gonna do differently with your prep, what you eat, drink that day? Recovery during the competition day, day of yeah, so day of I'm gonna have a, a good breakfast um, hour and a half two hours before our first event and then For most of the day, it'll be uh, Fluids good. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, nice. I'll have like sh uh, shakes of just proteins and carbs um, And then I'll have some hydration liquids um, I have like these hydration sticks I'll have Simply Nano, I'll have my massage gun and foam roller. Um, so I'm gonna have have everything, but uh, yeah, mostly liquids. I'll probably have, comp day I'll have a little bit of candy, just mm. for fast sugar, like some Mike yeah. and Ike's. Excuse for me to have Mike and Ike's too. Good. But fast sugars, yeah. So I might have some Whole Foods, I'll have some bars and things, but those days, man, you're like, you maybe get an hour rest max, mm -hmm. and then it's go time again, so you don't really have time to have a full meal. It's just gonna come to mm -hmm. you. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mostly mostly fluids, except before and after the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do a real breakfast. Yeah, good. So, yeah, man, looking forward to it. There you go. Yeah. How about you, anything else new before we get into some business talk? Uh, well, what's new with me is my business talk, so mm. we, can, we can just... Any other live things? Um. No, not not really. Things with you and Brett are good. Yeah, yeah. going going while we're taking a couple trips soon. Nice. Uh, I mean, I guess last time we recorded, yeah, we went to Pennsylvania for. Wait, did we talk about that last podcast? I, I don't remember. So. Yeah. Well, no, well, think, well, things well, are going well though. What yeah. else you got planned trip wise? Um, so we're going to Key West down in September Ooh. in October. Yeah, nice. and then think I'm going up to Michigan in August for my birthday week. Nice. Um, stay on the lake up there. I can't remember where it's at, but we're gonna. Uh, I was gonna ask. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll, yeah. So we're going up there, and then, yeah, man, just golfing a lot, staying active, playing tennis a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm hyper focused on my on my business right now, which we'll oh yeah, into, so. let's get into it. Yeah. So like right now, yeah, like obviously things are going super well. Um, obviously still, still booked out to the max. Still, still going, going, uh, work, working with as many clients as possible, but still dedicating meaningful time to each one. But yes, yeah, so that's taking up a lot of my time, but. We're at a very exciting tipping point of my business because as we've discussed in this podcast multiple times, one of the biggest obstacles that I have had to overcome, and I think the next thing that's going to kind of be the next domino for my business and what, what I want to do is, is my website and a different, different marketing channel. Because right now, a lot of my, my new business comes from LinkedIn, um, Fiverr, and then obviously like referrals. So I get a lot of referrals from there. But I need to like diversify a little bit. Like if, if the LinkedIn platform just dropped dead tomorrow, like I need something else, like a different marketing channel. So my motivation for doing a website would be obviously to, to gain credibility and, and, and have a place to send people, um, but also just another, another place for people to learn about me and an, another way for me to, to, to book more meetings and have people send there. Cause I wanna, I wanna make business cards soon that I can start dropping off of businesses um, in different places where my clients will be. Um, when I start making relationships for, with recruiters, I want to be able to show, like when I, when I start really creating these relationships with people and like reaching out to, to recruiters to build relationships for them to send people to me, mm -hmm. um, when I start reaching out to colleges to go speak at them and do resume workshops, I need some place that's gonna like, have like credibility for what I do. Like I'm, yeah. I'm really good at what I do and I've had a lot of success this past year and you go to my LinkedIn page, you'll see 20, 25 testimonials on there. So like yeah. the credibility is good on there, but I need another place that's like a, like better at showcasing what I'm doing. So anyway, like the biggest obstacle for me for making that website was creating the blueprint for it and what I'm gonna put on the website. And I finally did that this past month. Nice. Like I've, I sent it to you yeah. and you gave me very helpful feedback on it. 
but I literally have everything laid out on every page, like what each page is gonna say, where what the buttons are gonna be on each page. So I have what I need to execute everything. It's just a matter of, of pulling up the square space, buying the square space and, mm -hmm. and, and putting everything on there. So I'm at a very uh, critical point right now. Cause like once that, once that's up, like I said, like I'm gonna be able to start reaching out to a bunch of people and getting my business cards ready. Um, and then, yeah, I think it's, it's a very exciting point in time right now for me. Um, Absolutely. And yeah, and obviously I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm obsessed with it right now. Like yeah. getting as much as, as good of a resume writer as I can be right now and um, really being able, like I feel like my work is a lot more mindful now. Like I'm, I'm in a much better state of mind when I work now, like I can block out all distractions and I've been able to get to the point where I can work from pretty much anywhere and mm -hmm. um, I don't need like a, a set setting to get stuff done like i can kind of get work done from anywhere so yeah yeah nice. things are going really well that's good man yeah like that's where i'm trying to get to i have a few things where i have to be physical but at a certain point i'll be able to travel wherever and mm -hmm. do most of most of the things yeah but, uh, yeah that's cool man um i think the website's really going to help uh, and you can put testimonials on there. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, Rogan is sponsored by Squarespace. So if yeah. you use uh, oh, yeah. Rogan, you save some dinero. Yeah, that's true. And you save a bunch of money if you like, if you pay for the annual rate instead of doing that monthly. Mm -hmm. Like I think, it, yeah, like you save a bunch of money that way. Yeah, so. I think it's, I've done it before. I need to do a new website too, but uh, I think it's like a couple hundred bucks yeah. for the year. Yeah, I think it's like, yeah, 151, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah you'll save money with yeah Rogan. yeah and that's 18 a month if you do it monthly so it's like a no-brainer yeah. yeah even even 18 a month it's not bad if, like, yeah that's what you got to do but right yeah might as well save save the cash you can yeah sweet so have you I mean I saw your um, blueprint have you done anything further past that or now it's just that is how it is. I know you said you picked your slogan. Yeah, that is how it is, and it's just a matter of uh, starting and um, making the conscious decision to. I'm I'm currently like talking with a few people and negotiating with people in terms of if I want someone to just execute it and build it for me, mm -hmm. but um, and then comparing it to if I would just be able to do it myself. Because right now, like the hard part is is over. Like yeah. it's just a matter of, of plugging it in, and um, I think if I did it myself, it would take like. 10 hours, 10 to, 10 to 15 hours of like yeah. meaningful work. I'd yeah. say like 10. Um, so yeah, just, it's just a matter of uh, kind of filtering out, like making sure like, do I want someone else to just do this for me? Or do I want to like gain the skills myself and just and just put it on there yeah. and save a lot of money in the process. Yeah. But, yeah. Hmm. So how would, um, since you kind of did the process, most of the website process, if someone is, because you were on the, you knew you needed one for a long time. Yeah, but kind of waited. If someone is starting their own business, how would you tell them to identify the point in time that they need a website to offer what they offer? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's all about marketing. Like, you got to ask yourself, like, how am I getting new business right now? Like, in what ways am I getting new business? And is it sustainable? Mm -hmm. Like, if you, have, if you have a blueprint in terms of, like, getting getting clients through a website or a social media platform or through networking and it's like sustainable then yeah I, I don't think you need a website but I think if you if you have like doubts on on whether that specific channel can be sustainable for you I think you need to build a website yeah and that's why like for me like I have a very sustainable way of getting clients but like it's social like LinkedIn which is a majority of where I get my clients it's a social media platform like yeah. who, like obviously it's very established and it's doesn't like it's going away anytime soon, but like, I don't want to like bank my whole future on a, on a social media platform. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Yeah. Um, just, just to diversify. And like, I just want to, like, I want to be able to market myself. Like I, like uh, the business card aspect and like, and like when I, like, if you're someone who's going to be creating relationships with like influencers and like, you're, you're like reaching out to organizations and universities and establishments and you're like selling your yourself to them. Mm. I think you should have some type of, of brand to back it up online, which is where a lot of people's attention is anyway. So, yeah. and I feel like you could automate more <clears throat> income. Yeah. You know, if you have, if you have certain, you know, maybe you have resume templates that you can have people buy for like, you know, four ninety nine a template. Yeah. Um, w whatever it may be, where it's stuff outside of you writing resume, 
where you can automate income. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where you yeah. don't have to be doing the things to still make money. Mm-hmm. And that's, yeah, I think that's a thing that I myself am missing out on, but a good way to, it's semi-passive, semi-active mm-hmm. income, but again, you're kind of hands-off and still yeah. turn and burn. Right. Nice. Yeah, yeah you'll yeah. have to let me know uh, what you decide moving forward, mm-hmm. and especially when it's live. Yeah, definitely. Because I have, I've talked to enough people where they need some help on the resume, and I always give your name, I was like, all right, let me know, like, I'll send you his info, like, all right, and it's just like, hey, <laughs> I can just send you the website. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. and mo- most people, like, that's, it's totally, it totally makes sense, it's totally understandable for you to want to work on your own resume, you know yourself the best, you know your accomplishments the best, um, it's, it gets to the point where, like, you start to overthink things, and you start to spend more time thinking about a small aspect of your resume than you should. And then mm-hmm. you, you bring out, you're like, oh, like, is this even worth my time to like do myself? Like, why not just source it out to someone else? Sure. And like, here's the question that, I guess now that we're on the topic, like people are like, oh, is hiring, hiring a resume writer cheating? Is hiring someone to write your resume, is, 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 it, is it dishonest? And the answer is no, because yeah. like a resume isn't a sample of your work. It's not like, you creating this resume is like a reflection of what you're gonna do on the job, like the resume itself. It's it's a way to convey your accomplishments. Right. So that's an interesting question. Yeah. And look, how, how many people with books actually wrote their own book? Yeah. Very few. They have ghostwriters. It's the same type of thing. Yep. Sure. Like they say they speak while a person's like recording, typing, all the above, but it's still paraphrased into a way that sounds like that person. Yeah, P- people aren't reading your book for, for your grammar. I mean, maybe like, people are like, oh, like this flows well, but people aren't reading your book because of the way you write your senses. They're writing, they're reading your book because of the lessons that you want to convey to them based on your life experiences. Yeah, it's, so. it's like, you know, people who have uh, secretaries, assistants, where they might sign certain things for the person they work for because it just, it's, it's not worth that person's time. Mm-hmm. And, and if I'm better at doing my job than writing about how well I do my job, I'm going to hire someone to just tell someone how good I am at doing my job. Right, right. It's not like, it, I see it as being resourceful. Yeah. It, it's There's no ethical dilemma in my mind about it. Um, it's like, it, and if you look at the types of ways other people make money, like, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you're helping people get a job. Yeah, yeah. So and to sum it, so yeah. So to sum it up, the, the company is not hiring you on your ability to write a resume. Yeah. They're hiring you on your ability to do the things that have been written about you in your resume. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, they take what fifteen seconds, if that. Yeah. So it's got to look good, and it's got to. You gotta catch their attention. Be professional. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta. You gotta be able to anticipate. Anticipate where that. Anticipate. Person, anticipate. Anticipate. You gotta be able to anticipate where that. Uh, <laughs> where that recruiter's eyes are gonna go on that page, and that's that's the approach I take when I write these for people. So. Nice. Well, Tim, we're gonna move some little more business talk. And <laughs> do you anticipate that? Do you see where I, I gotta, was going with that? I gotta quit talking so fast. I don't say words like that. <laughs> So did you sub out your for I? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm evolving. <laughs> <laughs> Voice cracks to Southern Twang words. There we go. Yeah, I'm interested to see what's next. Yeah, stay tuned. Uh, be speaking Mandarin. <laughs> um, yeah, man. So glad the business is going well. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we've been talking a lot about your website. So glad it's finally. It's here. Yes, like it's it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna do that soon, but right now, just my thing now is sales. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that's um, yeah, that's the thing you gotta focus on that first. Yeah. Priorities. Like, yeah, gotta make money in order to spend money to make more money. Mm-hmm. So, but going well, man. I'm having some good referrals. Um, head coach Kyle has referred me to some of the people that he's done strength work with. Um, one's down in Tennessee. So wait to hear back from her, but her I'm actually designing menus. Okay. Um, yeah, because she was like, I just don't want to think about it. Like I just need ideas on on what to eat. So um, doing that, she's got obviously her programming down, um, and then got members in the gym, got a few more outside the gym, and I think some of it has has to do with 
they've been around me enough where like yes looks on everything but people see me getting stronger I'm in good shape mm-hmm. I might know a few things yeah because I'm still like I'm like I'm the youngest dude there mm-hmm. the youngest person there. Yeah. Uh, outside of maybe like one or two people mm. but to most most really I'm still a kid yeah so I've had to kind of I think prove my worth a little bit not just coaching but also me performing being in class yeah. with people and them seeing me progress where like I think comparatively I've had some quick progressions on certain things so yeah you know and that's like we were talking earlier everything is recovery and so I think that has attracted some attention where people are are now inquiring, hey, what's what do you do with your nutrition coaching mm-hmm. and stuff? And you know, it's interesting with Monica, I've told her to eat more food, mm-hmm. which is a very weird mental game for women especially, is eating more mm-hmm. to get the result they want. And so I, I had to tell her and I've talked to other clients about this now where if you're not eating enough your body is now in starvation mode. It doesn't think it's getting more, so it's gonna hang on to what it already has because our bodies wanna burn as few calories as possible. Mm -hmm. It doesn't wanna burn more calories. Um, So to where eating more will tell the body, hey, I'm getting more, I can let some go. Yeah. And, And, but that's a very, like, for me it's like, all right, just add one more meal throughout the day. For you, yeah, I'll add another meal, whatever. Dates in your almond butter, whatever. But for a lot of women, which is like half of my client base right now, eating more food is just, mm-hmm. uh, no, I, I, I don't want to gain weight. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I listened to a podcast about how to kind of communicate through that. So mm-hmm. uh, that's, that's an interesting challenge. I've had some, early on, I've had interesting challenges, but I like it because it's like, okay, like, I'm not always going to be going in this direction with clients. It's mm-hmm. not all the same. So yeah, but it's picking up. Um, I guess someone from the lacrosse team that I spoke with a few weeks back asked for my info. So we'll see what that leads to. Um, and then with nutrition coaching, I was talking to my dad recently, and because I I've been trying to work on how to get more Super Nano out there, how to get my coaching out there, and so Super Nano, I'm gonna try to hit more like collegiate athletic trainers, directors, mm-hmm. things like that. Cause high school kids are just, you need to get the parents in, you know, stuff yeah. like that. There's extra stakeholders. Yeah. yeah. But in terms of coaching, uh, I've, we kind of talked about maybe trying to target travel team coaches mm. for performance nutrition coaching because travel teams, those people are invested. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's where a parent might listen to that. Like, Oh, Hey, you know, he's, going to offer it to if there's at least this many people a group rate you know if the whole team even better but you know if you're interested you can contact him directly and he can work with your son or daughter to help increase their performance using xyz yeah and so i think trying to reach out to and the info of travel team coaches usually you can find that Mm -hmm. but i'm like okay those people are invested in their performance and they will invest as much as they possibly can yeah to make sure their kid is a better performer yeah so that's good I think that's the new game for each of those but yeah. uh, other than that yeah things have been fortunately picking up good um, yeah we sold the house that, that I'm living in currently helping them finish that up so good deal on that definitely the seller's market right now mm-hmm. but uh, I'm just figuring out where to go next yeah yeah it's exciting yeah, man, a lot of moving parts, but uh, keeping it, keep moving forward, and um, yeah, one day at a time. Good. Stressful, but it's one day at a time. Yeah. What you got for some book talk? Uh, book talk, yeah. So, you want to do career, career tips, or, or do you want to oh. do book talk first, and then... Let's do career tips, yeah. Yeah, so, that. I know we mentioned on the last episode, but I'm going to start building in more, like, a more dedicated section to, like, giving people actionable tips building off the knowledge that I've gained with my resume writing business. And I try to take on like what my clients have been asking the most about this week, whether it's about resumes, whether it's about interviews, whether it's about advancing at the company they're current, currently at, 
career development just in general. Um, and one thing I want to talk about today is uh, how to nail every single inter interview answer. Like people are like, oh, how do I, how do I answer questions when I interview? Then obviously like what I tell them is interviews are a two way conversation. Obviously like you need to ask them questions. They need to ask you questions. It's a discussion. It's not, it shouldn't feel like they're drilling you with questions and you like spitting back answers. But like if you're trying to figure out like how to answer questions in, in a, the best way, um, it all comes down to like storytelling. Like people, people are motivated, people are influenced, people are impacted to take action and by stories. Like you win people over by stories because they're, they're unique. They pull on emotional strings. People make decisions based on emotion. So if any, any answer that you give in an interview, if it can relate to a specific example or story, um, something unique, like that's, that's going to separate you the best. Um, and it all starts with, with being memorable. Those stories, those stories are yours. Like, it's crazy that there's how many people on there are six or seven billion people, whatever. Everyone has a different story and everybody has a different way of how they got to that interview chair or that seat. Um, so use that to your advantage, like use your uniqueness to your advantage. Um, and every answer should tell a story about a time that you did the thing that they're asking about. So like if they're asking you about, tell me, like, tell me a time you use team leadership skills or tell me a time you used emotional intelligence skills. There's like a three step, or like a four step framework that you can kind of use. Um, and I was kind of looking, I was doing some research and I was kind of trying to figure out like what the best way to orient this was. And it's, it's a STAR acronym. So like situation, task, action, result. So like when they ask you a question, like start with like the, the situation, describe a situation where there was an issue at your company, there was an issue that you faced, just describe the situation, the present moment. And then like task action, if they talk about team leadership, to build that into your answer, be like, I had to use team leadership to solve this problem. I had to use this skill to solve this problem or this situation. Um, and then the action, describe like what you did, describe it specifically the actions you took, um, what, what, like the people you work with, the people you brought in to help you do this, um, specifically what you did that was unique. And then obviously the result. Describe some way that it impacted, whether it's the amount of time you saved, the amount of money you saved them, the amount of money you made them, um, how it impacted the workplace culture that you're at, how it impacted um, the way people interact with each other, just the organization as a whole. So that's kind of how I, 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 a short answer on how, how to nail every single interview answer. Mm -hmm. Be memorable, tell stories, and then describe the situation, describe the task and the skills that the interviewer asked you about that you used to, to solve that problem, and the actions you took, and then the result. Quantify it in some way. Yeah. So, and people listening might like, well, that's so much to remember. And I'm already like kind of in the hot seat. It's like, well, that's why you practice. Now. Yeah, that's where preparation comes yeah, in. Yeah, and that's where Tim comes in. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, yeah, it's it's a different type of performance. Yeah. You know, you have to be sharp, ready to go. And, and I'm sure a lot of people will think like, oh no, I don't have that much experience. I don't have that many good stories to tell. It's like most people by now, you had a job or two throughout high school. You had multiple jobs throughout college. You've, you've had some type of different experiences where you have stories. Mm -hmm. It's just remembering what you did and, and, and those small things. Maybe it happened one day, maybe you had a disagreement with your boss, or maybe you proposed something and it went over really well. Mm -hmm. Either one works. Yeah. And, and so it's like it just, you got to draw some things up. And that's mm -hmm. where practicing a little brainstorming, they're like, oh yeah, that did happen. That could make a little, that could make a nice story in an interview. I'm like, yeah. exaggerate a little bit. I'm not saying a lie. Pump yourself up a little bit. Though, yeah. You know? Um, however, it's like, change it to head of XYZ, yeah. where I was in charge of, you know? Yeah. You know don't, don't, words. don't undersell yourself. That's, right. that's what I tell people. And then like, Building off what you said about preparation, like the best thing that I tell people to do is like write, just write it down. Like write, I'm not saying like write the entire story and what you did, but write like a couple words to like remind you and trigger that story. Mm -hmm. Like I would like, I would list out the skills that that interview or that that job requires. And then I would have a story that matches up with every single skill that they asked for. Ooh, it's good. It's so simple. Like you, you really don't have to spend a lot of time writing out the specifics. Just, yeah. you know, the story, then you can just pick up on it. Yeah. Just have something there to refer to. And you can bring that into the interview with you. Like you're not gonna get points doc docked off if you if you bring in paper interview. Like you should always like 
at the beginning of any, every interview, you should gain permission from the interviewer and be like, hey, is it okay if I take notes on our discussion? I, I really want to, this job is really important to me. I really want to make sure that I am I am taking what you say and, and remembering it, so. Yeah, and, and look, show up with a professional binder. Yeah. You know, the, those are so, like, that's such a thing mm -hmm. where having one of those, you can have your notes written in it as you're taking notes, but you have your personal notes on the same page where you can kind of have it all in front of you, ready to go, mm -hmm. and none the wiser. You got permission to take notes, you have your notes already, your bullet points, whatever you need, okay, this skill, this skill, that story, that story, done. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's great, man. Mm -hmm. um, my tips are just gonna be two quick things for, for weight loss. You know, I have a few weight loss clients now and everyone's gonna react a little different, but if you're just kind of fresh starting out, you kind of work out, kind of don't, uh, two biggest things, weight train two to three days a week you can do full body in and out in an hour and then eat whole foods eat as much whole foods as you can um, it's easy to consume a lot more extra calories when we have you know too much liquids or shakes i mean you know a cappuccino or something from starbucks is like yeah six seven eight hundred calories that still counts yeah um so yeah so what qualifies as a whole food like can you give an example Stuff of like, like you know you can, chicken or if you do something with ground meat like mm -hmm. making food um, yeah so foods that aren't empty calories is what uh i mean yes and no calories are calories but like getting less processed things okay. so like i love deli meats but i don't do a lot of deli meats it's processed okay. meat so the more like i guess raw in the rawer state so ground meats um carbs like quinoa's rices mm -hmm. you know pasta fits as well with you things like that where you're eating real food mm -hmm. it's not like nothing but snacks and then bars and, and shit like that um, mm -hmm. but i know convenience factors too yeah so it's, some people don't like to cook mm -hmm. but yeah i think i think whole food meals and weight training two to three days a week you're going to see your weight drop significantly mm -hmm. yeah okay and Good. if you're over consuming adding more whole foods you'll probably kind of balance things out because mm -hmm. you'll be fuller more nutrients too it's just real food is nutrient dense yeah yeah so those are two great tips quick easy things i say they're easy but they're not always easy so yeah start two days a week of weight training and go from there okay good book talk book talk down and nerdy with it let it. us get it i'm going to talk about gary v and authenticity that's i like that guy <laughs> look at this um yeah one thing and I know, I think I brought him up an episode or two ago talking about creating great content and I've been more consistent with content and making sure it's stuff that like I would actually talk and post about. So um, performance, recovery, you know, weight training, nutrition, like that's just, that's who I am. That's what I like to do. Um, you know, I've added things that I didn't know, like I'm in CBD and then helping my friend Kyle with his CBD drink, but it's like, that's just stuff I'm genuinely interested in and, and, and like learning about and doing. But yeah, coaching, like that's what I post the most about. Podcast, we have a podcast. And so I'm making sure what I post is just like, that's, I am what people are gonna get. Mm -hmm. There's really like, there's no crazy surprises. Um, except my spectrum of music genres I'll listen to, that's, that shocks some people. <laughs> I'll go from Disturbed to you know real sad country but it was funny i was doing double unders and listening to my country playlist grace lear came on yeah like, oh yeah i'll practice some double unders a little little grace lear um yeah authenticity and it's just i've over the last couple of years i think made sure i was more consistent um where people weren't guessing what version of me they were going to get now mm -hmm. i just i've really practiced on being consistently me from social media to real life. Like, I am so I am. Yeah. I'm a wise guy. I'll take something seriously myself, not all the time. But, you know, like, yeah, I'm a coach. I like all this shit. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Be authentic. Mm hmm. Yeah, going back to what you said before as well, like, with you just like looking better and you like, showing that you're healthy like in the eyes of other people like 
your, your body and the way you carry yourself and your energy level, like it's your proof of concept for your business. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. you, I mean, you are a walk, a walking, I don't know, like marketing tactic. Like, yeah, I don't know if I phrase that right, yeah. but like people will see, um, and that comes out in your personality to like how genuine you are and, um, c consistency with like your regimen, but also who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah. I'm not saying I won't go out, and drink, shoot some pool, and get mad about losing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what you got, man? Yeah, so I am going to talk about uh, You Inc. You Incorporated by Harry Beckwith, and the section of his book talks about like what what people buy and like what people value. And before I was I was talking about my previous in the previous section about how people uh, buy on emotion and buy on stories, and that and that kind of goes into this like. In this book, he says, like, life is a sale and the path to success is at both living and selling it. it no, it says the path to success at both living and selling is the same. Like, they're synonymous. Mm. So, like, whether you're convincing someone to buy your product or your service, whether you're convincing someone to, uh, like, spend time with you or, like, be worthy of their time or whether you're convincing someone to whatever, like, go out to eat or something. Just, like, the small and, like, the, the meaningful things. Mm. Uh, but, like, going back to, like, you're in from a professional standpoint, like if you're selling a business, a product or selling yourself in an interview, like people value and they will pay more for the way you make them feel. And this is what this book talks about. Um, and, and what, how, what I took away from this is like, you can use both your knowledge and your confidence to put people at ease. Like people, people go for you. I mean, if people are going to you for insights that they don't know about, you can you can put them at ease and influence them and win them over by utilizing like your preparation, your knowledge, and going along that your confidence. Like, mm -hmm. and you do that by doing your homework and out outworking your competition by reading, um, staying up to date on industry trends, uh, knowledge on things you've learned through experience. Um, that's what people buy. Like, the more you can build that stuff into you, like when when people sense that you're prepared and you've invested time into learning the knowledge that's going to be valuable to them, that's going to put them at ease. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what people buy. So that's what I took away from that. That's kind of how, that, that's how, I, that's how I approach my business. Like I don't go into a single call without doing homework on that person. Like yeah. I'm never going to talk to a person without knowing about them. That's why I always ask someone like, can you please send me, if you have one, please send me your, re your resume over ahead of time so I can learn about what you've been doing. Yeah. Um, I always look them up on LinkedIn. I'm not saying I go on their Instagram and stalk them, but like I learn about what they've done in their That's career. What Facebook is for. Yeah, I learn about what they've done in their career, and that gives me context as to the the knowledge I can provide from people who have worked in that same field before. Mm -hmm. um, but I can also ask them meaningful questions. That's going to get them talking about what they've been doing in the past and yeah. help them realize treasures about themselves that they would have never even realized before. So yeah, yeah, I love the the confidence with the knowledge because I think you and I have both experienced that where. You just you know what you know mm -hmm. and we still don't know a lot about our industries but we know a lot mm -hmm. um, and where someone's talking to you and you're like oh man he really knows his stuff like he's pretty sure about this mm -hmm. I think it can also give a sense of kind of back to our conversation with Tim Roberts where it's like don't be desperate for the business mm -hmm. like it you're playing for the question of oh wait can you help me yeah and he's like, you'll be fine without their business. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you won't be, if you really need their business. And so I think having that level of confidence will also give off to a person of, oh man, he just, he's treasuring right along like, with or without me, he's, he's solid. Yeah. Man, he's good. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe they got something here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I like that, the knowledge with confidence um, to put people at ease. For sure, yeah. So yeah, right. you incorporated Harry Beckwith. All righty. All right, everyone. Thanks for hanging. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day. And until next time, we are out.